We returned to Eric Switzer's apartment back in the natural world, such as it is, of Elysium. In Seattle, our three protagonists, dazed, confused, dehydrated, exhausted, and generally put through the mill after their experience in Switzer's VR realm. They encountered an individual by the name of Grace, who offered them much in exchange for service. Two of them agreed to this deal. Duane did not. And now as they stumble forth, almost emerging from Switzer's body, though not quite, not in a physical fashion, they just step forward and they are on the mouldering carpet. Duane... We've established that you just went through an emotional and mental ordeal, to put it mildly. You have been stretched out on the mental torture rack, and you have snapped at every synapse. You are ready to break. As you fall to your knees, having witnessed things that you did not believe could be, having been exposed to truths that you were frankly never fair, never prepared to face. Your hands shake, but you find yourself going for the handgun in its holster. Whether you're about to turn that gun on yourself, on one of your companions, cast it to the side, discover that you can't use a gun again after the kinds of things that you've just witnessed is ultimately up to you. But something terrible is about to happen relating to you and that weapon. I hold the gun. I don't even understand where I am right now. I thought I was on fire and I still think I'm on fire. It just doesn't hurt, but I'm still on fire really, right? I have to be. It was burning in hell but now I'm somewhere else interesting maybe if I just pull the trigger it's all over and that's what I deserve but but something in me just denies that because no if I do that Eric wins Grace wins and I don't want them to win I want them to suffer and I just sort of stare there turning the gun over in my hands Ignoring anything else for the moment. Sylvia, Toby, you can see Dwayne before you. Both of you, of course, feel almost as strung out as he does, but it is quite clear that Dwayne has taken the brunt of the damage. In fact, to your eyes, it still looks like he is burned, if not burning. His skin looks raw. It looks separated at the joints. Whether that's a reality or whether it's an illusion that stretches through from where you've just emerged, you don't know, but he appears to be physically and mentally in pain, and you can see that he is cradling his gun in his hands right now. I... First, I... I am staggered by... coming back. The... utter and complete change of... physical state... where I was once shot into the chest was mortally wounded and then I was suddenly brought to a place where it was just vaguely there and I was smudged with blood and my clothes torn to this sudden other change where I now seemingly unhurt my head just hurts so much it's like Thunder going in on in there striking and I'm just trying to stabilize myself as I look down at the kneeling Dwayne and him cradling that gun and recalling the conversation that we had recalling seeing him going up in flames throw a short glance at Toby but then I Again, look at Dwayne and I say, You're not... You're not gonna oppose her, are you? You're not gonna go against Jessica. <laughs> Why would you care about that, Miss Spears? And 
As she speaks to me, I begin to find things a little more clear. I hold the gun and I just gently start standing up and taking a step back from Miss Spears. If she still is Miss Spears, after all, her and Toby, maybe they're just like Eric now. Just pawns. Pawns being used by that being from hell. After all, hell's real. I know that now. It seems so obvious. <laughs> Dwayne, just don't... Don't do anything hasty, all right? We, we can still get out of this. We can still find a way through this, huh? We can we can still get our lives back, and we can we can have better lives, you know. She's gonna she's gonna make it so. Oh really, Toby? She's gonna make it so. Oh, I I get it, Toby. I get it. So you serve hell. Uh, what's the plan, Toby? You gonna go into shotgun Jessica in the head or run over a car? You tell me what what your big plan is for Satan down there. <laughs> I take out my my gun from my purse and I just hold it kind of limply to my side as he is now backing off with his own gun in his hand. I don't know. I, I don't know. But I'm, I'm sure we'll figure it out in the moment, huh? We'll, we'll find, a, find a solution for this, you know? We'll, we'll get what we want. We'll get what we need. And we'll get through this, as I said. That's... That's all that matters, huh? What do you plan to do with that gun? You think I'm gonna shoot you? Doesn't make a difference, you know. What would what, be the point of that, shooting you both here now? You'll just go to hell one way or the other, and uh, I need to make sure I save my ammunition. No, I think it's time to part ways. Let's see who gets to Jessica first. Yeah, that seems fair. Good luck with the, uh, getting your kid back from the dead and your life being better because, uh, the devil is totally gonna do all those things. Just like Eric, Toby. She's gonna help you just like she fucking helped Eric. Good luck. And I dive for the exit of this apartment as quickly as I can. I let him go. Me too. Looking after him. Tiredly. Taking in the stench of this place once again after having been in that place outside of places I too I look to Sylvia and then I look to my my hand how do I feel do I feel do I feel strong do I feel do I feel like I can do this or is it still a tiredness and, and the weariness from the journey I guess Inside you feel energized, heated, almost like someone just returned from the gym, but on the outside you're still worn down and exhausted. It's like you've been several days without sleep, or indeed food. I recognize this. I recognize this. I've, I felt like this before. I got through it that time, I'll get through it again. This is going to be fine, I say to Sylvia. Let's, let's get this thing done now, huh? Get this thing done, you say. I tiredly put the gun back into my purse. As in what? As in finding and killing Jessica? Is that what you're saying? She deserves it, doesn't she? I, uh, look down at the floor. For what? Really? What exactly is her crime? Trying to build this community, trying to hold things together in a world where everything is falling apart. She hasn't exactly held it together well. Not all of us have prospered. But that's going to change. Can we all prosper? Is that what you're saying? You believe in this kind of paradise on Earth? Paradise in Devonsport? I look up at you now, my eyes kind of glowing again with that intensity that you saw at the first meeting back in the room with the mayor and everyone else no no not everyone but we you me ken it's gonna be different for us it's gonna be good for us we're gonna be whole again you're gonna get back what you what you want what you lost right 
what grace arranged to have been taken from me through Eric. Having Eric set up as a victim like that, just so she could fulfill her own agenda with all these victims. School shooting? I, I felt so sure. And then I felt like I, I stared down at him. I was in the morgue, I saw his dead body, I saw them both. Both this killer and I, and my grandson, and I was, I was so ready to do anything to, to help him, but what if I just said goodbye? If I got him back, what would I do? Get him back to his good-for-nothing dad and see him raise weekly as again, waiting for another school shooting to take place? You can be his mother. It can be the two of you. It can be better. It can be everything that it wasn't. And you can have the life that you deserve. That I deserve. That we all deserve. And what would you do exactly with that life? Not drink myself to death. Not be plagued by nightmares that never end. Not deal with all the things that I did over there. Is that what she promised you? Yeah. You'd be rid of that? I'd be rid of all that. A new start, together with my brother. We'll, we'll have a new life. A new chance, do you, you know? A new chance. It's not every day you, you get the opportunity to have a new crack at life. Maybe, maybe not here. If I have him back, maybe we could go somewhere else, somewhere safe. Maybe, maybe we can figure that part out. When we've done what we need to do. When we have delivered what she requested from us. And we will get our reward. I've spread so much lies, I say. I break eye contact at this point and I start moving for the door. I've spread so much corruption, cover-ups, intimidation. And I don't know if I could just... If somehow I could show some sort of official, in some sort of official sense, that Patrick wasn't the one who was pushed to do this. If I could somehow clear his name along with the rest of what I'm doing, maybe that will make up for some of all the stuff I'd done. If we could get it out there, how he was affected by this these not games but what red soft and what eric switzer did i suppose that would be a bit of a comfort along the way and i <laughs> grit my teeth trying to even envision a reality where henry is back I start moving out of this stinking apartment as you are making your way through the doorway, Toby, you feel your phone buzz in your pocket. I immediately pick it up. Who is calling? Uh, it's a message. It does appear, however, that you've got somewhere like 27 missed calls, 15 unread messages. Your battery is down to about 3%, which is testament to the long life of a non-smartphone such as the one you own. I start looking at the messages and the calls. I guess they're coming from the same place. Yeah, they're primarily from the mayor, your uncle, asking, Where the fuck are you? You're supposed to be updating me. Why the fuck aren't you picking up your phone? Don't tell me you've left Devonsport. You're needed back here right now. You'd better not be drinking this off somewhere in some dive bar. If I have to bail you out of prison, etc, etc, etc. There's not really a word of affection or worry for your well-being there. Uh, you even have uh, some messages from your cousin, Ashley, which are more concerned. Hey... I wanted to check up on you after our chat. Hey, you okay? Fine, ignore me then. Fuck you then. I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. Looking at the date on your phone, you have been 
out of touch for two weeks. We've been here a while, huh? I think to myself, well, I suppose I could call him, I suppose I could try to explain everything that's happened here. But I can just do that when I see him. I think it's time to head back to Devonsport. To face all this and to find Ken. That's what I need to do, really. I need to find Ken. I don't think I can trust Sylvia and Dwayne with this. They seem too affected by everything that's going on in their lives and everything that they're carrying with them. No, I'm, I'm going to deliver this. I'm going to fulfill this mission. I'm going to complete it like a good soldier. And I'm going to do it maybe together with Ken. He can be my, my, he can be my brother in arms and we can finish this once and for all. So I'll uh, begin making my way out of the apartment, and uh, if Sylvia's still there, I'll see if I can get a ride. Otherwise, I'll find another way to get back to Devonsport. Yeah, I'm, I'm just moving ahead in the corridor, not really paying attention to you and your readings of messages and checking your phone. To me, I, I'm still inside my head, trying to make sense of this all. But it's hard in this physical state of agonizing headaches and feeling like I'm, I haven't eaten for days, nor drunk anything. I idly scramble for a pill in my purse, make it down to the car, and I am at this point just expecting you to ride with me, seeing as I know you don't have your own. Well, you would. Except it appears, and I'm making a call here based on the fact that I'm making moves on Dwayne. Dwayne has stolen your car. Or someone has. But it's most likely Dwayne. Huh. I come out. What time of day is it? It's early evening. I also get the feeling that something's different. I try to start up my phone. It's long since burned out. No battery left on it. Shit. I look around. I see Toby still at his phone. It seems my car is not here anymore. How long are we gone? Would you believe me if I said that we've been gone for two weeks? I stare at you uh, for a while. I look down. I uh, guess I would. And I have this queasy feeling of how we could have ended up just like Eric Switzer in that chair being compost or, you know, pieces of flesh rotting away, not even realizing it as we were stuck somehow in that non-physical existence I kind of run my hands over my body just thinking about that feeling that I'm not falling apart and then I look down am I am I still is there still blood all over my clothes and my torn where the gunshot wound entered, how how is the rest of me, aside from the, the body itself, not being damaged? That's a very good question, because while you do not have the holes to imply gunshot wounds in your clothes or in your flesh, what you do have is a thick layer of mold and sinewy growth. You're not entirely sure what it is, but it's covered up your clothes where they had torn and even your skin is covered with this dirty blotch that looks tenderless and unwholesome in the extreme like a wound gone bad and yet still tried to heal I stare at it and I then I reluctantly gingerly move my fingers and I see my long grown nails I try to just 
grab a hold of this layer that I hope isn't my skin. Try to gingerly peel it away with my with my with my hand from my other hand. Okay, could I ask for a fortitude roll from you, please? That is a 14. You pull and scratch at the top layer, and it is a bit like picking off a scab. It makes you queasy, because it isn't quite like this is just epidermal. As you pull it, it's like you feel your insides moving, as if they are attached to it. I uh, stand there for a bit, making grimaces as I'm tagging what I realize is my own skin, and how deeply this goes, and I, I realize, like, no matter that whether or not my my insides are damaged from that fictive gunshot wound. It seems like the trade-off has been my whole body just wasting away. And... I feel so... disgusted. I struggle with not throwing up. You probably just, I don't know, see me doing this, Toby. I don't know what your response is to that and, and the fact that the car isn't here. I think I'm mostly concerned about the lack of the car. Um, how the hell are we gonna get back now then? I guess, I guess we'll have to go by train or something, huh? Yeah, the two of you are going to be forced to take public transport or hire an expensive taxi. Thankfully, the deep bank accounts of Sylvia Spears should be able to afford it. But, in the meantime, we cut to Chief Duane, barreling down the road, away from Seattle, in the most expensive car he's ever owned, if, well, possession is nine-tenths of the law, as they say. That's true. It's a nice car. I've got the radio on, full volume, because why not? Why not have some music before I go back to hell? You've uh, noticed as well that your phone has been drained. You can plug it in into the car to charge it as you go, if you want. If you want to remain incommunicado, that is also absolutely fine. I pause for a moment. I'm trying to think clearly, which is easier now. I'm driving down the road and uh, Toby and Sylvia didn't try and stop me. That's made everything much easier. You see, I've got one mission. One final mission. I need to get to Jessica before they do. You see, Jessica, she's got a plan. She always has a plan. There's no way in this game between her and Grace that that she's just sitting there waiting to get shot. No, no, no. She will have had a plan. That's why this is all happening. That's why she got us together to investigate this stupid nightmare to find out that it was Grace and do something. So, I need to find out what that something is. If I can get to Jessica first, I can find that out, then they can go and fucking shoot her and get their devil's rewards, and I can get a shot at taking down that fucking Grace. And if I can take her down, and maybe, <laughs> maybe actually give Eric a punishment he actually deserves, then, then I can go back to hell and it's fine. It, it'll be fine. That'll be fine. You see, I'm going to hell, I know that. The only thing pissing me off still is knowing that I'll go to hell, and then these motherfuckers all get to win. No, no, not yet. Not while I can still move. I'm gonna find out how to fuck these people over, and then I'll do it. But I'm unsure if Grace has already made her move. Like, maybe already the bodies have been uncovered, and <laughs> as soon as I pull in a Devon's port, I'm gonna get arrested. That's, that's probably... The, the play, so no, I need to I need to try and get to Jessica completely by surprise I won't have long to act I think that's the move, that's the move, I don't charge up my phone they could track me on that Very well, in that case you speed along to a classic rock station blaring through the windows despite your 
attempt at subtlety, of course, you are coming in with a loud hailer, effectively, feeling like you're on a crusade, a righteous mission. This orchestra, like Ride of the Valkyries, playing behind you as you drive down toward Devonsport. It's not far, not far from where you are at all. A madness has possessed you. Anyone that was looking at you right now would be able to see it clear as day in your eyes. But there is no one here with you. It's just you in the car, behind the wheel, listening to some Leonard Skinner of all things right now as you drive along at speed. Indeed. Part of me wonders if maybe even Spears and Toby will thank me because when I kill Grace, maybe they won't go to hell. But, nah, they'll probably try and shoot me pretty soon after that, so, oh well. As you barrel along the road, could you make for me a soul roll, please? Now is not the ideal time for Dwayne to be uh, seeing through the illusion. That's a two. Yes, you feel righteous. Yes, you feel as if almost a god of vengeance is driving you right now. But that doesn't stop the heat. Quite literally, your skin starts burning. It's like the car has become a furnace. The faster you go, the hotter it gets, and then you slow, of course, naturally, and the heat just intensifies even further. Your hands are stuck to the wheel. The heat has amplified by such a magnitude. You can see for a second beside you in the passenger seat, is it Grace? Is is it Sylvia? Is it Erin? That journalist that you got rid of all those years ago perhaps your wife just out of the corner of your eye when you focus on her she's not there but as soon as you're looking back down toward your hands you can see a feminine presence beside you leaning over you examining your wounds delighting in them you think could you make for me a fortitude roll nine The heat grows to such an extent that it travels all the way up your body now. You start blistering, your skin starts tearing. Uh, Can you take... I think we're going to take a critical wound at this point, I'm afraid, Dwayne. Uh, All of your body uh, is now suffering intense burns. And it isn't an exposure to a direct flame, by no means. It is as if you have become locked in an oven and the temperature just keeps getting hotter and hotter. You tell me, what are you doing at this point? I scream in fury. My vision begins to blur. I get it. She's here right now, dragging me back to hell. I stop the car because one final primal part of my brain realizes that if I keep going, I'm going to crash and that's it. And as I stop the car and I get out, and I fall to the ground on fire, at least in my own mind's eye. I scream to the heavens. God! I get it! Come on, God! If fucking hell exists, you must exist! Just give me this! Let me take them to hell! I know I'm going! I know I'm going to hell, but just let me take Grace to hell with me! Please! Please, God! I'll go quietly! Just let me take her with me! The words choke in your throat as you conclude the heat is so intense that you can't even produce enough saliva to accompany sound. One of your eyes goes utterly blank. The heat must have got into your cornea and burst some major blood vessels. Some nerves have become twisted and frazzled. You look back with your one good eye at the car. You can see that you've left half of your hands on the steering wheel where you didn't even notice you were ripping them free to escape. It is a small mercy at this point that the heat starts subsiding. An incredibly small mercy, because you are left a quivering, frightened, angry, smouldering wreck of a man. You look like the... The Dwayne McLean who may have rushed into a brothel to rescue a screaming woman. Only now you are bearing the scars. 
and they're fresh and tender. Cars whiz by you as you lay sprawled on the embankment until eventually a cop car pulls up. Seeing you're laying there, you get a flashlight shone upon you. You hear a radio crackling. It appears we have a driver pulled over. It seems to have been be bearing some injuries. We're going to need a bus. Uh, yeah, get an ambulance out here. Uh, maybe a fire crew. Yeah, fire crew as well. Uh, I'm going to go and uh, see if there's any life signs on him. You hear the trudge, trudge, trudge of feet through the grass and. And then you see the silhouette of a behatted state trooper squatting down, leaning over you. Are you okay, sir? He's clearly noticed your chest rising. Do you remember what happened? I kind of lie there, pathetic, and yet still alive. What does that mean? Does that mean God is helping me, or is Grace just waiting for the final... Laugh. Probably. After all, maybe I'm gonna get arrested right now. Maybe they're gonna ID me and take me back. Ah, oh, this is a fucking stupid game. I kind of look at this person and just meekly say, I need to make a phone call. Uh, you, you'll get your chance to make a phone call, sir. There's an ambulance on the way. I need you to not move right now. Where was the fire? I don't... No... It's okay. Don't don't speak, sir. Uh, I I I'm going to I'm going to get some water from my car. I won't be gone for more than ten seconds. I'm just going to apply a little bit of water to your to your lips and mouth, but but not too much. I can't risk you flooding on it. So I'll be back. He runs off, returns. I'm just I'm going to pour a little. If it's too much, spit it straight out. I nod. I'll just do whatever this person tells me to do. I need to make that phone call. I think that's the only thing I can do now. Fuck this. You can now speak a little more clearly, though of course you still feel as if you have been incinerated. Uh, thank you. I just need to make a really important phone call, and then I'll let you take me to... Can you take me to Devonsport Hospital? That's where my health insurance is. We're closest to Devonsport, so uh, I, I'll make sure the ambulance is uh, is going that direction. Uh, if if that's if that's the best place for you, I know they have a very good burns unit. I just need you to stay awake. I need you to keep talking to me. What's your name? Dwayne. Dwayne McLean. Dwayne McLean is. As in Dwayne McLean, the 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 chief of police. I pause for a moment and realise I have to at least play the game a little bit longer. Maybe this is the final move. Yes. M Mr. McLean, there's been a APB out for the last week or so searching for you. Uh, people have been looking for you. H has someone been holding you against your will? Something like that, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I'm... He picks his radio from his belt. I have Dwayne McLean here, the, the victim of the, the burning. It appears to be Dwayne McLean, missing person. Uh, I don't have the code with me right now, but, but you'll be able to find it. M-C-L-E-A-N. Uh, it spells out phonetically. Uh, Mr. McLean, I, I do need you to, as I say, I need you to keep talking. Uh, there's a lot of people very worried about where you've been. Uh, whoever's done this to you, we're going to we'll find them. But right now, the most important thing is to get you to a hospital so that you can be physically well again. Sure, I just need to again this one phone call. I can take it in the ambulance, please. Just one phone call. I, I can't allow that, sir. I can't allow you to make a phone call right now. I'm a police chief. I can. <laughs> it's a police business. He's looking troubled. He looks over both shoulders ridiculously as if there might be someone listening in the shrubs. And then he pulls his cell phone from his pocket. Who do you need to speak to? Jessica Inzio. He passes you the phone. I'm guessing you know the number. 
Yeah, I know the number. Yeah. Okay, you tell me what to dial, and I will put it on speakerphone. I'll give you some privacy, but not not much. I'm not going to be going far. Sure thing. Okay. So you tell him the number, and you call. As he leaves it on speakerphone beside your head, he walks off in the direction of his car, not far. He's still keeping you within sight. Cars are still whizzing by. He starts putting uh, traffic cones out, a sign so that no one tries to pull over here or no one travels too fast and happens to smash into the back of Sylvia's car that you picked up. This is Jess Carinzio. It's McLean. Where have you been, Dwayne? Hell. Grace is coming for you, Enzio. She's got the other two. They're coming for you. I would like (laughs) to help take Grace down for you. But I need you to do something. I need you to just give me some time. Enzio, if you give me the time, I'll do whatever you need. I don't care anymore. I know I'm going back to hell soon. Just give me some time, and I'll take care of Grace. There's a pause at the other end of the line. Lasts an uncomfortable amount of time. Chief McLean, I very much appreciate the information and your service. Grace has already begun her her plan, which is tragic. I have my pawns, she has hers. Right now I feel information is the best thing you could have provided for me, however. It's good to know that your two companions have been compromised. But I don't feel you're physically going to be in any state to help. Sit this one out, Chief. If you return to Devonsport, you're probably never going to leave it. What do you mean? You mean I'll die there? There's a war coming, Chief McLean, and wars have casualties. I've done my best for this community, and now someone wants to tear it away from me. But I'm not going down without a fight. I know that. That's why I need to help you, because otherwise she's going to fucking win. And do what, Chief McLean? I can hear through your voice that you are probably butchered, riddled with stab wounds, or burned to within an inch of your life. Whatever the case is, do you see this as some western where you're going to stand in the thoroughfare and challenge Grace to a duel? That isn't how it will work. Your life right now means nothing to her. And very little to me. You've fulfilled your service. I thank you for it. And I will campaign for you to reach a just reward. But at this time, your purpose is done. She hangs up. I drop the phone. I laugh for a bit and it hurts a lot. So that's how it goes. Eric wins. Grace wins. Inzia wins, I guess. The flashing blue lights of cop cars and an ambulance eventually arrive, blocking the road as they put you onto a stretcher and load you into the back. You're asked a buffet of questions. Uh, What's your name? How are you feeling? What happened to you? Uh, Were these burns inflicted by an open flame, by a chemical solution? Uh, etc etc but most of it passes in a blur a daze sure enough good to his word the state trooper does request that you're taken to Devonsport hospital and they don't disagree a cop is traveling with you the state trooper having passed over the case you recognize one of your former comrades from Devonsport's police station. It's been a while since you've seen him. Peter Cox, the deputy, is sat in the back with you. You can see the look of concern upon his face and it's creased with anger. Dwayne, there's a bit 
There's been a lot of uh, people worried about you, Duane. Little old me, really. He shouldn't have been worried. Your daughter's been worried sick, Duane. There's been killings and... Well, a lot of people thought she was probably one of them. Carol included. Wait, what do you mean? Kill killings? What's been happening? He looks as if he's reluctant to speak at all, but does so anyway as the ambulance enters motion. Listen, I'm going to let the paramedics treat you, but there's been a whole bunch of murders in Devonsport, and when you didn't show up and you haven't been answering your calls, you've been gone for two weeks, maybe more, since anyone last saw you. Given where some of these bodies have been showing up and the state they've been in, well, Dwayne, you was either a victim or you was the perpetrator. It was just no made no sense that you'd gone missing at the same time as all this going on. So I have to say it's a relief we found you, but you've got some answers to give. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll tell you whatever you need to know. Just the one thing you need to do for me. You need to do one thing for me, please, because I can't do anything apparently anymore. They're going. They're going to be put you, putting you under by the looks of it. So you better ask. Better ask quick. Carol, get her out of Devonsport now. A week, two weeks, just that, and then she can come back. But just, just something's coming. You need to get Carol out. You feel the morphine start to take effect. <laughs> I begin to fade off. I just try and lift my hand and grab Peter and just say, Last will and testament, Peter! I'm gonna die! Just get my daughter out of Devon's port. Sylvia and Toby have since arrived in Devon's port by their own means. Sylvia, you are at your apartment. What's What's been going on and what are your plans? My... My clothes being now stuffed into a black bag of garbage stinking moldy I let that cab take Toby wherever he wanted he's on a mission now and I I don't know if I'm bored with it I don't know thoughts are just tearing at my head as I'm as I'm looking in the mirror, I try to take a shower. I try to wash it off. The stench, the mold, the whatever it is that's attacking me, because that's what it feels like. I'm being attacked. And it, I feel, I look at my, my eyes, my cheeks, my face. It seems like I'm falling apart. Ah. Uh, my phone is charging idly on the side, letting it re-establish connection. And the th first thing that, that comes to me as I see that date, the two weeks later, is... Did they bury him? Was there a funeral? Have they all made their goodbyes? Were the bodies released? Are there any messages from... from my son, from from Richard indicating any of this. There's two messages from Richard. One is from last week telling you when the funeral is due in about a day from now, so providing you get some sleep, you should be able to make it come the morning. The other one is five days later, so a couple of days ago. It's from Richard again, asking... I would expect a response, at least in regard to Henry, mother. Where are you? Drowning out the messages from Richard are a more recent spate of messages from Mayor Dapperton, from Catherine, your colleague, paralegal, from Jessica. They... They are all demanding the same things. Where are you? Get in touch with us. 
you are supposed to be keeping us up to date. Catherine's, though, is clearly related to work rather than your special mission, and hers change abruptly as time goes on. Sylvia, I need to speak to you. I need to speak to you now. Get in touch with me. Please, Sylvia, where are you? And then it's... It's Scott. Something's happened to Scott. He's disappeared. And then a day later... Sylvia, I need to know where you are. Scott's dead. Sylvia, I need you right now. Where are you? You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played The Shunned for Cult Divinity Lost, which was written by Jonas Nelson, with additional material from Petanalo. The Shunned was released as part of the Screams and Whispers scenario collection. Our game master was our dear friend Matthew Dawkins, and the series has been sponsored by the fine folks at Helmgast. The music was made by H.M. Carceri, featuring a number of collaborations with other artists, and was used with permission from their label, Cryochamber. Check out their website at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for some moody dark ambient. We would like to give massive thanks to our champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Ludwig Manford, Bob Lange, Julian, Cameron, Xavier, and Anton for their generous support. And we would of course also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Inti Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name read on the show as the Champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening, and remember, Death is only the beginning.